Well, we are starting off uh, part three. Yes, that's right, part three uh, on the tilt cab, the C600 tilt cab from AMT. And we're getting down and dirty uh, quite quite figuratively, actually. Well, not, well literally, I suppose. But <laughs> uh, we've got the, the uh, fuel tanks glued onto the frame. Well, that looks pretty cool. Um, and then um, we did soak everything in water so that the salt came off and some of the white glue came off uh, all the parts. Uh, we have done, let's get a little bit closer here. There we go. We have done our first pass of washes over the frame with the gray accent panel liner. Um, that leaves behind this really cool looking uh, dusty effect. Uh, I always thought it looked like um, like when you wash off the frame of a you know if you've been if you ever worked on cars and you did some you just like hose off the the bottom side of the car or whatever there's always like this gray film that's left behind that you actually have to get in there and scrub um, never never one of my favorite jobs but um, uh, because I was the son <laughs> I was the one that got underneath the car with the with the uh, spray bottle and the uh, the goggles and the uh, scrub brushes and uh, you know made everything look pretty, um, and yes, my father would check. So, uh, so yeah, so we have these uh, guys glued on here now. Um, I do need to weather the well, they are weathered, but I need to start the weathering process on the fuel tanks. But we wanted to get them on there. Um, You'll notice I don't have the the uh, the filler caps on here yet. That's because I wasn't sure which side's going to be on which, and which way was going to be up. And I really figured um, I don't know if this is true in real life or not, but I really figured that you know these would be sort of universal in um, in application. So if I was to put uh, a filler cap at this end, it would probably have a filler cap at that end because it's basically the same thing just on the other side of the of the vehicle so uh it would be cool to put them both in the center um that's probably actually a better idea um but uh, we'll see how that goes yeah i think you know maybe the center would be better but i wanted to see how these mount to the uh, to the frame rotationally so that i didn't have like a filler cap sticking out over here or whatever uh, i know i could have mocked all that up and everything but sometimes things get lost in translation um you know mistakes happen stuff like that so and it's a trivial matter of putting these things of putting on the, the filler cap so it could very well be a situation of oh yeah i put that on there and then you put it on the on the actual frame and realize yeah that's on upside down so 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 there you go uh and you believe me it if it if it can happen it will happen in this shop so, uh, so we got the gray primer all over everything. We have a little bit of rust, uh, gray primer, the gray panel liner on everything. And we have a little bit of a, a rust color going on on our air tank back there. I'm not 100% happy with the air tank's location. This is the location I'm borrowing from the instructions for the, uh, for the flatbed. I really would have liked putting that, because it does come with two of these guys. I would have liked putting them up inside of here on both sides of the inside of the fuel tank. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. I did notice, I did notice uh, that I do have my, my taillights in the exact wrong place. They're supposed to be inboard of the frame, not outboard of the frame. So we will be taking care of that. So, dough. <laughs> Dang it. All right. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, slice these off and then place them on the inside of the frame. And, um, yeah, just kind of live life from there. But uh, that's that's going pretty well. Our engine is now mated to the transmission. They look grimy and gooey. Um, got the uh, the belts just sort of stuck in place right now. And uh, that's yeah, that looks okay. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna do a little. I'm gonna tone that down a little bit right there. Uh, that 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 uh, rust color there. But uh, yeah, I'm liking how this is looking. This is coming on wrong really really well. This engine builds up pretty nice, as a matter of fact. And uh, so I'm liking that. This is a little dark here. I apologize. Um, but this is a super dark engine. So uh, that's looking really good. We have a radiator with uh, the radiator shroud on there. This looks really good. I really like how that's looking. Yeah. I'm, it's it's going to be awesome because you're not going to see it <laughs> the way the engine's done. Uh, here's the heat riser. Comes off the driver's side exhaust manifold. And uh, I like how that looks. So this is with the glue technique that we used. We just dribbled it along. Let's see here. 
where is my silicone brush here we go so yeah we would just take little drops of uh, of glue and then get blurry we're not going to get blurry till later today uh going to get blurry so then we just you know just drag it along the edge there and then let it dry and then come back put it in the, in the pan of water to soak and uh tickety boo bobs your uncle here's the fan oh yeah i like that you look so good you look marvelous uh let's see here and then our um the air cleaner uh yeah so I uh, I stippled a little bit of uh, tulip fabric um, fabric paint in there. Just kind of stippled it a little bit to make it look like a, a kind of a, a chunky weld. And um, hell, that looks pretty good. <laughs> so it looks all right. Uh, drive shaft is looking sweet. We're gonna do another couple of passes on that with some different wash colors. Uh, our fifth wheel. And thank you very much for for letting me know that that is supposed to be called the fifth wheel. Um, we just gave this a heavy, heavy wash of the orange brown, which I mean that's that's like a, a fresh rust color. Just gave that a heavy wash of that. I think that looks great. That's going to look great. Uh, at, at, same with the back of our brake drums. Yeah, yeah, buddy, that looks good. Uh, and then our wheels. I still think this one a little. A little heavy-handed with this so see if we can't tone that back a little bit but this one looks good i like that one and yes there is a yin yang single symbol in there that's a happy accident right <laughs> yeah that was pretty cool thanks for pointing that out i completely missed it myself these guys here are a little rustier than the rest of them because i figured that you know these are deep barrels so they don't um they're not going to get a lot of water while it's just sitting there these guys we have a little bit more exposure to the rain so that that's going to be cool our bumper oh the cut to grass is the bumper Ta -da! look at that i do want to clean up this this section right here because that that's just a little too perfect looking but the rest of this is just yeah i like that I'm liking that a lot yeah, I gotta do the backside too, but yeah, totally digging where that's at. And then, and we've got color on the cab, so we did our TS7 racing white for the for the light bits, and then we came back over everything with XF18. This is medium blue, and it's a flat color. But look at this. Ooh, that's a pretty. Oh yeah, you're so pretty. But yeah, uh, masked off. The, I did the, printed the whole thing white and then came back and masked off the areas that I wanted to. And the mask job isn't great. And that's on purpose. Literally, it was on purpose. Because we wanted this to look like somebody had sprayed this in the, in the, in the, uh, in the repair yard. Uh, I do, I do, I do want to fix this spot right here. That is a bit of embarrassment. That's not supposed to be like that. But, um, yeah, so it turns out we were using our, um, what do we call that thing the cordless airbrush that thing is amazing we'll talk more about that a little bit later on but uh that thing is really nice and the uh particular needle size that's in that thing i don't remember what, what needle size it is but it turns out to be approximately the needle size uh, uh the, the spray pattern size in scale of a spray can so you can see i just went ahead and i, I left this area here bare i thought that was kind of cool to do that but uh, it just, you know, it got some uh, thin spots here and there. Uh, the trick to my painting on this for, for to, to get to come out looking so nicely worn and stuff is to actually try and do a good job and just not do it as good as I had hoped they would. And we can see that we still have some salt here to fleck off here and there. Um, some of the tape did pull off the, uh, when it did the masking, demasking, I guess, it did pull off some of the, the salt and everything, which is fine, I don't mind, because, uh, you know, we're done with the painting part, we're going to get on to the weathering part, but first, we're going to do little tiny slits, and you can see there's a little bit of a bubbly texture right there, that, this is where the white glue is, so we're going to do little tiny slits in there so that the water can get down inside where the glue is, and do what it wants to do, either lift off the, uh, the paint, which is fine, or it will uh, remove the glue out from under there and it will leave a bubbly, rusty texture. So that's even finer. So that, you know, that'd be cool. Then we have it all over the roof here. And then we're also going to do some light sanding here and there to tone down some of the spots and kind of do some fades. Really liking how it's looking so far. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked about this. Um, 
but yeah this is going to go in the pan of water and uh soak probably overnight um let that do the work for me uh but otherwise everything is really really coming together um i've got the uh, cab marker lights kind of started they're a little dark i was a little uh, a little shocked by how dark those came out but eh, you know it is what it is um but um yeah, I'm really liking how this is looking, and uh, we're going to be carrying on with more washes on the frame and stuff while the cab is soaking. All right, so we'll check back with y'all when we have a little bit more to talk about. We do need to uh, do get started on the interior stuff, but we'll, uh, we'll do some of that on camera because we are going to do a weathering on the inside here. So we'll show off uh, the salting technique and the white glue technique to help out with this interior area so uh stay tuned for that bit there that'll be coming up in our next segment okay so now we are on to was this tuesday yes tuesday and uh, we let this soak for several hours last evening and then finally attacked it with a toothbrush i have a, a toothbrush that i just kind of keep with the um soaking um I guess soaking pan, I guess is the best way to say that. But uh, we, we attack the whole body with the, with the toothbrush to take off all of the, zoom in here, all the salt. And we can see what that has been doing for us. This is looking so good. So, so good. So this is, to me, a jar of paint. And it's just airbrushed directly over the gloss um, rattle can paint. And uh, it does not like adhering to that at all. So that is really working in, in our favor because the just the, the, uh, the, the action of brushing has removed all this paint around here. Um, and I'm completely fine with that because I just think it looks great. Um, so yeah, we're looking really good. Uh, there was a few areas like at the bottom of the uh, headlights where um, I didn't do a little slit in there and uh so water wasn't able to get in there and attack the glue that was underneath but we did um do a couple of spot things and this is what's so cool about the glue technique is should you miss a spot and you happen to notice it you can just go after it with your hobby knife yoink like this guy here i just did a couple of little uh hashtags right in there and then um q-tip in some water and then just dribbled that on there made a nice little uh, dollop of water on there and then went and had lunch and they came back and it was just like and it came right off and that's the sound that it makes came right out there so I uh, did that on both this one's a little bit lighter than the other side and I, I like that I think that looks cool uh, I like how it's coming off on the cheeks up here yes yeah, so I think that's cool this truck has cheeks and then um, around the side here, we, the uh, toothbrush got a little heavy hand. I got a little heavy hand with the toothbrush because I was trying to get underneath this mirror. And yes, there's overspray on the mirror, and I like it. I like that like that. So we're going to leave that like that. And then I had done some uh, glue around the fender here. I figure this is where the driver's, you know, uh, watch chain or, or watch chain. People even have watch chains anymore. Uh, wallet chain or something like that would, would drag against the side of the truck getting it out there. And then a little bit of wear right here because, you know, buckles and such. And then down here is just some, some road rash. So uh, along the back here, uh, I did I mentioned before that I did keep this open. Like maybe this was actually attached to a box truck or something like that. And now they're using it on this frame. Uh, so I wanted to kind of leave that like openly painted or openly painted, unpainted. <laughs> oh my um and then uh on the back side here i figured we'd do a little bit of a salt technique too uh, i really like how this side came out this side came out st stupendously cool this side meh it's all right it is what it is and then we got some bubbling paint going on here on this cheek right there so i thought that looked kind of cool oh i got some uh some uh some glue up in here too so i shall try and remove that will this come off that is very hard. There we go. It's kind of gummy. Oh, it snapped right off. Cool. Look at that. There we go. Cool. Okay. I like. I want to keep that like that. That's cool. And then uh, a little bit of wear back here along this edge, and some more wear along the sides, and a little bit of rust dimples here and there. So this is looking really, really good. So oh, I have to fix my mirror support there. That came loose. But yeah, and then on the top here. You can see all the bubblies 
we're just going to leave that. Oh, that's so cool. And then we will do a light sanding on top here. See if we can burn through in a couple of light areas just to give it some more age. But yeah, this is really looking good. We're getting ready to do some washes on that bit there. Um, we do intend to start working on the tires because these are the only things that aren't clean, that, that haven't been dirtied yet. So we're going to go out to the garage and put these on the drill. Run them over some uh, 80 grit sandpaper. It's either 80 or 100 grit. I don't remember which, which grit it is. But um, get these guys smashed on there and then run along and put some miles on those. Quite, quite literally. And then uh, we're almost done with the dash. I'm liking how that's looking. Yeah, buddy. So there we go. Uh, I'm liking that. And then uh, we did a mock-up of the engine and transmission with the uh, drive shaft along with the... Uh, radiator to see if we have good clearances and uh, 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 good clearances all of our clearances and our, our, our under overs are over under so everything's nice uh, now we have to figure out how to do the exhaust these aren't glued in they're just sort of placed um, and I have been chatting with a, a, a fellow over comments um, Rampy I think his name is and um, and uh, he he has been warning me he's like watch out for the air cleaner because the air cleaner is super mega tall and he's like, the fitment between the air cleaner and the bottom of the cab is going to be a pain in, in the neck. So uh, we've been discussing back and forth over comments. Uh, he's given me a couple of good pointers and tips on how to address that and what to watch out for. Uh, he did say that, you know, the engine and transmission would probably be best if we lower that about two millimeters or so. I cannot disagree. That seems like a good idea. Also, it seems like that my system here is sitting a little on the on the high side anyway. I'm wondering if that's because my drive shaft is putting a lot of pressure on the engine and popping it up like that. So um, I want to do another dry fit with the bottom of the cab. Uh, but, you know, with this type of system, the way the, the, these little loops here or mold it onto the frame and then we have to glue these guys on in place on there it, it really seems like you only have so many times you can uh put this on put it on and take it off before you you know you, you hit that magic number of it's done so um a little leery about that just right now but uh i can probably get close to weathering this up and then um mount it on here do the do the fiddling that I need to do with that and then just drop the cab over it so that that could probably work in my favor maybe we'll do that like that but yeah this guy here is looking as I'm gonna fall out this guy's looking really good we still haven't done the weathering on the chassis yet we've just done that gray pass but right now we're gonna go out and do some tire damage so uh we'll be back when we have more to report all right so we are back from the garage and we have our tires nicely sanded down um, we did run them on the shoulders a little bit. That's not an extremely good example. This one probably is a little better if the camera would cooperate. Perhaps you know my pain with the camera cooperating. But, uh, yeah, so these sanded down real nice. Uh, so much so that the camera doesn't even want to focus on what's left of the tread. So it, they look like they got miles on them. And then the, the poor marks... Uh, from the uh, from the injection of the uh, of the vinyl, I guess these are made of. Um, that just ha that just sort of adds some uh, just sort of adds some nice detail. So it's so it's kind of cool. It looks like a little blister in the tire, but um, these you know these are sanded down nice, and we sanded the sidewalls a little bit. But they're not awesome. They're not perfect. We want to go from this. Where did you go, sir? Here we go. So we want to go from this guy to this guy. This is a lot better looking. Um, and what we do is we have some pastel chalks. Um, I got like, I don't know, the winter scene or something like that. I got it at, at the local hobby shop, hobby store and uh, arts and crafts store, I should say. And you can tell which one I've been using. And we just scrape it down with a number 11 blade, get a nice little jar of powder there. And then um, <clears throat> one of these dudes, we can find these on Amazon. I think they're for doing eyeshadow or don't quite know it's been a long time since my goth days uh mrs bg found those for us but we dip it in the in the pastel chalk and then we just give it a brush over and, oh my god that's so strong but no it's cool it's all right it's okay 
really brings out the detail in the tire, doesn't it? There we go. What does that say there? Firestone. Hey, what do you know? It's a Firestone. Cool. All right, so we're going to brush that around there. I'm going to do a little bit along the tread also. And kind of mush it in there a little bit. This is the Bob Ross portion of the video. There we go. And uh, I need a sacrificial brush. You, sir, you have let me down recently, so you get to go in there. Let's see if we can. There we go. That's a ticket. There. A little bit too much on there? No worries. Wipe it off. There we go. With a mildly sweaty thumb. There we go. I like that. That looks really good. Okay, so we're going to do that all around the tire. And this, is, this will be messy. You don't want to do this at the kitchen table just before dinner. Maybe right after dinner. All the way around, we're not being, we're not being precious about it at all. Now I know that there is a million and one different types of things you can use to make tires look dirty. This is what I happen to have on hand. I have a bit of a background in working with pastel chalks, so I feel comfortable with that. Uh, I don't do any tile work, so I don't have bags of grout sitting around. But I understand that that is also a, a really handy dandy way to go. Uh, then we're going to take this, so this is looking really good. It's still not to the point where we want to go with our sample tire, but we have our base, okay? And uh, so what we're going to do next is we're going to get out the Tamiya powders. Oh my God, Tamiya powders. Oh geez, these things cost so much. Yes, they do. But look, I've had this thing for uh, six years and it's still going strong. So I think it's worth the investment. And did you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but did you know you use this side to, to apply and that side to blend? Yeah, um, my my niece told me that. <laughs> she, she's like, oh, why do you have makeup? I'm like, this isn't makeup. This isn't makeup. This is for, uh, this is for weathering powders. Uh-huh. She's like, well, how do you do, how do you do that? I said, well, I just put it, use the brush and dab it in there and do this. And she's like, no, 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 you use this to apply and this side to blend. I'm like, by golly, she's correct. So there we go. There's our blending. So let's do a little bit more. And we're just hitting the high spots here. Just going to hit the harsh moments. We're not going to scrub it down into the grooves. This is just like a surface dust. And then we'll blend it in. Doing the swirly pattern. Down the bridge of the nose. Into the T-section of the face. There we go. Yeah. Okay. That really brings out that detail. Look at that. That is nice. Okay, cool. So that's, we're going to do that to the rest of these guys. Um, and we're going to be tired when we're done. <laughs> All right, cool. So there's that. Um, we're going to get up back onto that thing there. And then we'll tune back in when we have more to show you. But in the meantime, it's just going to be us powdering donuts. So we'll talk to you a little bit. So more progress has been made. Uh, we've got tires on wheels and I think, I think those look really good. The back sides, meh, not so great, <laughs> but uh, I do like the, uh, the little bit of splattering that's on here because it looks like a lot of uh, rusty pitting and stuff. I think that looks, looks good enough, right? So when it goes on the hub, Let's mount it to the frame, of course. This whole area is going to be filled, so I think we're going to be okay. Uh, the dualies, dualies are looking good too. Um, this one, I left the yin yang in there because I just think that the, that was a happy accident. I really like how that looks. Kind of a fun thing. Uh, once again, well, we're going to actually clean off this space right here because that is the mounting surface for where it's going to mount up to the um, to the rear drum. Okay, it's going to fit down inside this little donut here. So we're going to try and clean that up as best we can also. Um, we do have the metal axle, even though this is glued to the axle and the axle is glued to the, you know, to the chassis and all that stuff. I still have the metal rod going through there because it does add extra support. So I, I, I like that. Um, 
We've been working on the engine and we have, I think this is a, a water box. I'm not 100% sure. The photographs that I've been seeing, there's actually this really nice looking piece of uh, metal superstructure that comes off the frame and comes up and supports this thing suspended over the engine. It's not actually mounted to the engine like this is. Uh, and it's too bad that AMT didn't uh, include that in there because that is a, a beautiful piece of, um, of engineering. So uh, perhaps on another build that I do, uh, I'll take the time to see if I can't scratch make some sort of bracketry that comes off the frame to support that. Um, well, I, I can only guess that that's the, uh, the radiator filter box um, because the radiator doesn't really have like a, um, a filler cap on there. So I'm thinking that this is like the remote filler box. And what's funny is it looks a heck of a lot like the ones that are on the Cobras from back in the 60s. And you want to see a, a classic BG model workshop mistake? Ta da! <laughs> I don't know what the hell I was thinking. But yeah, I am. Um, yeah, the pooches were screwed. So uh, we're going to have to go back and, and, and paint in the backside of that there and make that look happy. Um, the air cleaner and the heat riser are white glued in place because we're going to be doing some test fitting to make sure this actually fits underneath the cab. Uh, like our friend was telling us that there could be an issue with clearance clearance so we're going to make sure that that's going to be a non-issue and then we also have our exhaust manifolds glued in place i was very very tempted to mount them lower but then i realized oh wait they're supposed to match up with the with the molded in lugs there and then we just took a nice a nice thin file scraped off the the uh, the paint on both surfaces so we'd have a nice a nice uh bonding surface for the cement and then um both sides here so i think we're ready to go and what's funny is this one the uh this is the driver's side um is mounted towards the rear passenger side is mounted a little more towards the front basically because it's the same piece flipped over which is probably how it is in real life as well so you know is what it is uh, also, after doing some experimentation of, of test fitting of the uh, of this in the frame, the, the whole uh, the whole kit and caboodle here, um, it turns out that uh, these surface th this this little lug right in here and that little lug right in there are basically the mounting surfaces for this bit that goes into the frame. So I've been having to do a little bit of modification to the frame to the cross member because the starter motor bump is running into this bit here so we've been filing this away a little bit a little bit at a time to make sure we take away the, the minimum amount necessary in order to get the clearance we need because otherwise the engine is getting kind of twisted in the frame there or actually kind of kicked that way a little bit but um want to make sure that 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 does its best job and we did some uh, test fitting to make sure that the the actual drive shaft does fit perfectly and it does it, it does seem to be just like a half a millimeter too long I can live with it we're gonna go ahead and go with it but this segment this we're gonna move that up there and move this guy over there this segment is about rust I'll take that out there and look at here so we've been goofing around with some rust techniques and freaking loving that this looks really good i think that looks mm, okay <laughs> but this part right here i've been sending some pictures to some friends in the community i'm like what do you guys think and i'm like i thought that was real i'm like that's what i was going for so yeah that that uh, white glue bubbling technique is um spot on man so <clears throat> let me show you a couple areas that i haven't addressed yet and you see how we got a little bit of bubbling going around there I'm going to show you uh, what I've been doing in order to kind of uh, enhance that a little bit. So, taking a push pin, a thumbtack, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call this thing, and I'm actually just pressing that into the glue. Gush, a couple little pinholes. Gush, like that. Okay, that looks good. That's all right. So now. Um, if I hadn't soaked this yet, I would I would do those little pinholes all over the place, or maybe like this guy here. We did do a knife slash, and then soak this in a pan of water, and then the water got underneath there and loosened up some of the glue, so that when we hit it with a toothbrush, it just flaked right off. 
that worked out great. But now uh, I, I like where it's at now. I want to leave that bubbly surface where it's at. So we're going to get out the orange, orange brown. So um, yeah, this is like the new rust color. I call it the new rust color. And we're going to shake that up real good. Um, once in a while, you will have to get in there with a stirring stick and get stuff out of the corners because it can pile up in there. And then you, especially when you start noticing uh, when you brush this on that it's a little on the thin side. So there we go. That's looking good and hearty. Okay, good. Uh, something else you're going to use. I'm going to use this. You can tell I've already been using it. This is just a silicone brush. And th what this does is it really helps grab onto something and sort of pull it down so I can give it direction and then um, and then we're going to use a couple of cotton buds to 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 pat it dry so oh don't shake that that's already open yeesh that was gonna be fun all right so let's see here on our little pinholes I'm just gonna put a couple of little dots and let those set for a bit but over here Get a little bit more because I want this to like flood and puddle. There we go. So that's that's puddling up nicely. And then we're gonna come in with this guy. Oh, we took a little too much out of there. I'm just dotting it, I'm just dabbing it down. Boop -a -doo -doo -doo, like this. Get it down to the drip rail. There we go. That looks cool. And that might be a little stark right there. So we're just going to dab it away. Dab it away now. Okay, there we go. Red Hot Chili Pepper song. Um, cool. And then with the uh, with the little spots up here, I'm going to dry off the end of the... It's got some schmutz on it. It's probably a piece of salt. <laughs> All right, so we're going to... Again, we're going to just dab and sort of enhance the flow. Now, so this guy up here on top, because it's a flat surface, I'm just going to imagine that perhaps it just sort of puddles out rather than follows a direction. Because most of these rust streaks would be because it's been sitting in the rain, uh, not driving. Uh, so it's been sitting in the rain and there's, they're just following the path, the path of least resistance. But yeah, that's that's looking okay so far. Let's let's actually just I'm gonna roll over that. There we go. So the funny thing about this um, this stuff here is that when it starts to dry, it gets kind of gummy, it gets a little tacky. So you can actually let it set for a few moments and then come back and pat at it a little bit, and you'll feel it be tacky. And we're gonna give a little bit of a. There we go. So there we go. That's looking really cool. I'm going to tackle that big dude right there in the middle but we're going to do something a little bit different because that looks like it's an older an older issue so we're going to go with the brown and again this looks like it's an older rust color shake it up real good i stirred these guys up yesterday so i think we're probably going to be good so so i'm going to just go right in and let her sit and this is nice and thick a nice thick application of that stuff and we're going to let that dry a little bit and then see can you see how shiny it is in there good so that'll, that'll dry a bit dull and then i will come back with some of the fresh rust or the orange brown and then do some some around the edging and stuff so that that'll help that out a little bit but yeah that's basically the technique we're doing and i try not to do too many areas at the same time in the same sitting because um you're going to start getting thumbprints and everything but i'm like i'm liking how it's going to look we're probably going to do a lot of the uh, the darker brown uh color on the front here uh, for all the peppering that's on the, <laughs> the peppering when we use this all the peppering to, uh, that's on the front there and then around the wheel arches and such because that's going to be like a bit more of an aged area so yeah i mean we're we're just we're just looking so good on here so yeah so that's 
that's the uh, the technique we're going to use for that there. We're going to pause for a moment and let this dry up, and then we'll come back and then hit it with that with that lighter color orange and see how that looks. All right, so it's been approximately three minutes since we uh, dolloped that on there, and then we just went back over it with the Q-tip and just dabbed it and then see uh wanted to see if it would kind of bleed a little bit down and it did it did it did carry it down a little bit so that looks good so again with the uh with the orange and flow it in so the thing about weathering that, that i've been noticing is it's all about layering uh, just like doing some figure painting, you know, it's all about layering. So I apologize that this is a little bit blurry, but we're going to just, while this is still very wet, dab it and just sort of, I'm dabbing it in the center, getting a little bit on the Q-tip. It's kind of an eyelash on there. Uh, dabbing it on the center, getting a little bit on the Q-tip, and then I'm just moving it off center so that I get just a little bit of a smear around the outside of the edge. And I like that. Oh, that looks... That looks spiffy. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Let's see if I can't pull that a little bit more down there. There we go. E -e 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 -e. There we go. All right. Yeah. Okay. That. That is it, my friend. That is the whole technique. We're going to do some darker rust on this guy here to tone that down a little bit. But yeah, man. This, this is where we want to be. So we're going to do that over the whole top. Um, probably won't do that as much to the sides, but, uh, yeah, we're just going to do like a weathering pass on the sides and stuff. I just like how this is looking. So, all right, cool. So let's see, this is getting to be a really long video because we're getting really into depth about certain things here. So I'm probably going to stop this right now, um, and then get on with a different aspect of it. And that'll be painting up the interior here and showing you the white glue and, and, um, salt technique for that part. All right, so we are getting ready to do a little bit of weathering on the interior bits. And we're gonna incorporate some salt. And we have a little bit of salt here. This, unfortunately, is Celtic salt, Celtic sea salt. Uh, yeah, well, I guess we're salt connoisseurs now. Uh, it's not regular table salt. It is a larger crystal. You can see it, it almost looks like raw sugar, um, but, um, or sugar in the raw, I should say, however it's pronounced. But um, we'll see if we can make that work. Uh, we probably won't need to put so much in general areas, just a little bit here and there. Of course, a little bit of water. I just have a tiniest bit of water right there. And then a little bit of Elmer's glue all. I always wondered why the cow. So I'll have to look that up. But um, yeah, just I have a little bottle cap of that here. And, um, and then also we're going to be using our silicone tip brush here. And then... Uh, one of these guys. These guys are the little um, little dealies with the tiny micro brush on the end of it. And then when when once I use that, I just pull that literally quite off right off the top there, and then use it as a stirring stick or a dabber or whatever. And then I have a little pipette here too. So with the uh, salt technique, I have been finding that when you want to do areas as, uh, um, as large as this, uh, the best type of thing to do is give it a, f a spray of flat coat uh, because that helps the water stay where you want it to. If it's got the glossy sheen, um, the water's just going to beat up and type of thing um, and or even slough away. I have some masking around this because we're going to go ahead and, and add the uh, the glue and the salt on there and then we're going to run outside, put this in the in the garage and let this, that uh, dry up real quick and then we're going to shoot it immediately with paint so it can stay on track. But... Um, first thing we're going to do is the salt portion of this okay we don't want to do this we don't want to do the glue and then the salt i like doing the salt and then the glue so now you can use a paintbrush you can use a silicone tip brush but the I, every time i do this it always ends up being this guy sometimes this guy but <laughs> it ends up being that guy uh to to apply the the water because apparently the best vehicle for water is the finger. So I'm just going to put along the top. 
and you see how it's beating up a little bit very very lightly this is not something we want to be doing in Arizona this time of year because water doesn't stick around that long just a pinch between your fingers and gums and then you see how little bit we're getting on there that's all I want to do I'm going to dump the rest back into the container that's all I want that's it there's just a couple of little flecks here and there come over and do it on this side too Will you cooperate, camera? Thank you. So there we go. Um, there, like I, like I said before, there are a number of different ways of doing this. I'm going to use a larger brush to sweep this out. Uh, also, down in the very, very bottom, there's supposed to be some sort of rubber floor mat. We're not going to do anything to that. We're just going to probably brush paint that a different color. But, you know, back here in the the back sill and a little bit there sorry 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 there we go that's plenty that's plenty good so I'm gonna take out the extra if we don't sweep out the extra of course that will show up in the paint and if you don't if it's where you don't want it too bad all right one last all right so that that looks like it's a little bit of a big cluster there so we're going to use a silicone brush here and manipulate kind of move things around pick up a couple of dry bits put them over here all right cool give it a little puff of breath and there we go Let's do a little bit more right down there so just imagining like Stuff got, you know, knocked around or bounced around in the back of the truck or, you know, ring damage or something like that. You know, I, I, I never noticed this before until after I got married. Um, you can damage a lot of the interior of your vehicle by just wearing a ring and touching things. <clears throat> Was it me did, that did it? Probably not. But we'll just let that lie where it's at. Okay, so that, that looks pretty good it's i'm just doing that that little bit of stuff right there the glue part i'm going to have a couple of seats on here so one's going to be approximately here and one's going to be approximately there so i'm thinking that along all the sharp edges we're going to probably have a little bit of wear um the color that we're talking about using on this guy is going to be probably german gray for the interior i already did the dashboard on that i like how it looks so check this out just like that. I mean, that's it, man. This, oh, that's going to be where the seat's at. Actually, yeah, let's go ahead and do that, where the seat's at. Maybe we have, I'm not sure how well the seats fit on here, but perhaps we have some, some thigh rubbage or something like that on there. If the seats cover it, oh, well, the seats cover it. But yeah, I mean, it's just that light just like that and then I'm going to do a little bit along this vertical area here like that ever so lightly hopefully you guys are seeing this okay on camera I'm actually having to do this without looking through the lens this is a little heavy right here but that's okay and then this this bump right there actually there's a heater box that goes in there we've already done this type of stuff to the heater box so, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies. My goodness. So we're just going to get a little festive with it right through here. Maybe this is where the guy's toolbox or lunchbox sits when he's driving. Hmm? Happy little toolbox right in here. That's right, Bob. Thank you very much. Go paint a mountain. All right, cool. So... We're going to do that. I mean, I want to do a little bit towards the, the, the front here, sort of splaying out a little bit. Ta da! Like this. And then we'll join it up there. All right, cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, touch, touch more right there. Okay. That's going to be it. See, it's already drying pretty well. Pretty quickly already it's probably from my my hot air that i've been breathing here but uh we're going to pause and then go 
put this in the in the actually I'm gonna put it outside in the sun and let it dry real quick and then we'll get back with you okay so quite literally three minutes outside glue was dry everybody was dry we went ahead and shot it with paint you can see it is the paint is still drying <laughs> um so we're going to uh where is my knife here it is I use my long blade it's ugly looking oh i gotta clean that okay so um through the glue areas just gonna drag the knife through the paint because we want when we soak this we want the uh, water to get through the paint will of course keep us from allowing that to happen so we're basically just scraping the paint off the glue right through there the salt itself will be fine um, that will come off no problem in the soak but before the paint cures up too much I'm just gonna go across it real quick here and there I think oh yeah we've got to do it on the, these areas up here there Right in there okay cool so i'm gonna let the paint dry up and then um because man is it smelly <laughs> but we're gonna let the paint dry up and then we're gonna soak this in the in a pan of water for a while it could take a little while sometimes i just put it in there for overnight but we can get rid of this get rid of this there we go some salt's already falling off which is fine it has done its job it's basically a masking material is what it is there cool so the plan for this guy here will be to paint that floor mat down there uh, rubber black and give this a soak and then uh, we'll show you how it turns out oh well, I guess we got to do some door card detail in there too so um yeah <laughs> but we're gonna let that so uh, soak uh, um, dry up and then we'll give it a soak so it's really looking like like we're going to have to expand this to a part four We've just uh, been covering so much material and stuff that I don't want this to be too much longer than it is already. So in part four, we'll go ahead and do the finishing on the, uh, the weathering for the uh, frame and then also in the chassis. And then also we'll show you how this comes out after we give it a soak in some water. So um, one last thing before we sign off for this video, and we wanted to show you a quick tip. Uh, on the mud flaps this is something I discovered a while ago. I talked to a couple of guys about this. They're like, oh yeah, I've done that for years. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess it's new to me. So I was pretty excited about it. But you got a mud flap. We painted it rubber black. And then we did a quick layer of uh, gray panel liner on it to uh, to give it some, some age. We're not done aging it yet. But we've gotten to the point where we want whatever aging we do to affect the white lettering that's on there. So uh, here's one we haven't done yet, and it's it's so ugly it won't even focus on it. <laughs> it can't even discern. There we go. The, ca the camera couldn't even discern what was what on there. So um, what I like to do is pick up a nice, a nice flat bastard and uh, a nice a nice flat file, and then um, let's we'll see if I can do this free-handed here, floating in space. Just lay it on there. Give it a couple of passes back and forth. Make sure there are no other areas on the mud flap that are raised. And let's see here. It's coming through pretty good. Cool. So the oval is higher than the script. That's all right. I'm going to use this guy right here. I'm not even going to turn this on. I'm just going to use an edge there and get in. See if we can't reveal the secret message that says drink your oval team there we go a crummy commercial i'll give that a little there we go but there that's that's what i like to do i'll give a little bit of a touch up right there in the upper f but yeah that's uh that's what i like to do on these mud flaps so any type of weathering that we do from here on out will affect the white on there it, it only works if this is molded in white styrene, otherwise, <laughs> you're out of luck. All right, y'all, we're going to go ahead and sign up for now and get this video uh, put together and posted as soon as possible. So we'll see you 
in a little while.